we could really use the laugh. So let's bring out Robert Siegel, former editor-in-chief of The Onion, also screenwriter behind The Wrestler. Robert, come on out. <laughs> Welcome to the stage. Come on down. Carol Kolb, former editor-in-chief of The Onion as well, head writer of IS's Onion News Network, writer on Community and Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Will Tracy, another former editor-in-chief of The Onion, yeah. also an executive producer of Succession and the screenwriter of The Menu, and his colleague Seth Reese, former head writer of The Onion, also former head writer of Late Night with Seth Meyers, and also the screenwriter of The Menu. Yes. And those are the formers, now for the current, Chad Knackers, current editor-in-chief of The Onion. Come on up. All right. We've assembled the dream team. Chad, why did you decide you had to come in, come, come along here and, and follow in these uh, big footsteps uh, over all those years? Corporate forced me. <laughs> <laughs> Chad's been at The Onion since the very beginning. But now he's finally the boss. Born at The Onion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen, Chad? Tell us about the history. Uh, of me, of myself getting there? I'm a little more interested in The Onion's history, but tell us about you as well. Um, well, the, the Onion was found in 1988 by two guys <laughs> that, <laughs> that sold it to two other guys, <laughs> and uh, they managed to keep it in business for a while somehow. Yeah. And then we've had many different owners. The <laughs> end. <laughs> <laughs> and of, of our panelists, Robert, you're the first editor in chief uh, of of that. Uh, you know, of, of all the editors up here, you were in the 90s. Tell us about the 90s. Oh, man. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Flannel, Nirvana. <laughs> Apologies for the lack of diversity. <laughs> Start with that. I, I'm I think woman. that's your fault. <laughs> Thank God for Carol. Back in the 90s, it's still guy owned, isn't it? What's that? I think the paper is still guy owned. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, sorry, what, what, <laughs> you, five guys, four guys. Uh, I love starting with apologies. What else do you apologize for? Yeah, that's. Um, the climate we live in. Um, <laughs> uh, the question was, what, talk well, about the 90s? Yeah, in terms of, so, it starts in the 80s, you're there, you're running in the 90s. Uh, I, I wanna try to, um, it's very hard to imagine what the news and comedy landscape was like then. Um, I mean, this was before, uh, you know, it was before The Daily Show. It was, it was before, before the internet. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I was, it was, well, like yeah. we were, we, yeah. when we were there, we were just moving was, on I to still the internet. Call it, I still call AOL it. AOL dial-up modems, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you get those uh, discs in the mail. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I predate, uh, yeah, I was born before the internet. Uh, <laughs> this was, you know, I, I grew up, my two interests in, in um, as a kid, I loved comedy and I loved journalism. I always thought I'm either gonna write for Saturday Night Live or I'm gonna write for, the, you know, maybe the New York Times. That was sort of my twin dreams as a kid. And um, You blew it on both I of Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back here. Um, <laughs> And I, at the time, I but didn't also, know. But also, did you view them as equivalent, the SNL and the just, Times? I viewed them as two very separate tracks. I didn't know there was such a thing as comedy journalism. Mm. Um, and, you know, in the onion, I definitely, you know, um, we were kind of the first at that. Uh, so it was a, yeah, I mean, I, I, I discovered the paper 19, 1994. I, uh, I graduated from college and I moved to Madison, Wisconsin for reasons other than career and, and found this. I still call it the paper. Yeah. In my mind, it's still the paper, even though there's no print, right? No yeah. print. Uh, How would you describe the style then versus now? Like, what was the style of the Onion then? It was more. I mean, in the early days, it was definitely more like Weekly World News parody. So it was sort of a parody of a parody. You know, uh, like like uh, Wiffle Boy and uh, I don't know. Do you remember? Yeah, but I think that was like sort of when you, you know, the transition for you being editor was more like being like serious, it, it was, satire, national journalism. Yeah, it definitely pivoted. As opposed to like the editors before you that were more like crazy, yeah, you know. It, it, yeah. I felt like for it to last, um, it needed to be topical, as obvious as that sounds today. Like it needed to actually engage with, with the world. And, I, I do remember you right. saying, I wish one of our writers would pick up a newspaper sometime. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you not. forced them to read the news. Yeah. The lampoon, it was not. You know, the, our, I mean, it was a lot, it was Wisconsin. You know, it was, a, it was a different point of view. It was Wisconsin, right. University of Wisconsin dropouts rather than. I graduated yeah. from. Did you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. <laughs> With the, yeah. Yes. 
And Carol, what did you fix that Rob broke? Why did you have to come in next? Um, I came in. Uh, I think I just, I don't, I don't know, I just continued. You know, by that yeah. point, I think we had really just been, you know, moving in this direction of, of, you know, like national news satire, comment on, on, the, on the, the news events, and I just sort of continued that. And becoming more digitally oriented. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we started. Um, 96. Yeah, we went online. Was, we went online. Yeah, and definitely it started to move in the area of being more, we had to do more daily content and yeah. more, like, you know, daily news cycle, which, which, you know, I'm sorry, Chad, that that's what you deal with now is a world where, like, you know, something happens and 10 minutes later you have to, like, be the first one to comment on that because that wasn't really the case back. We were on, like, a seven-day. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was, and I'm just like, a lot oh, God, easier. thank God we don't have to, you know, do that. You also pushed for, <laughs> pushing toward video, right, and parodying cable news. Um, yeah, cable yeah, news yeah. Then, then was becoming, the you know, department. cable news in 2004 when I started blogging about it, it was not what it is today. Today, it's right. for better or worse, a lot of times worse, like the heartbeat of the country. It's this intense thing about whatever's happening. But back then, it was starting to become more relevant, and you all started to mock it as a result. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Say more. <laughs> <laughs> I like those, by the way, that's what the worst CNN hosts do. Say more about that. Talk more about that. It's not um, a real question. Um, ask me a question, then I'll answer it. <laughs> well, I think there's a difference between what we, you know, there's a phrase, this terrible phrase of the last seven, eight years, fake news. Mm. And the other yeah. is something different. I used to always call so it fake news. talk about the distinction news. there. Yeah, I used to call it fake news because, because I thought satire sounded so pretentious. So I would always say, like, oh, I'm, I'm editor-in-chief of The Onion. We do fake news. And now <laughs> it is this thing. Now that, you can't say that. Yeah, yeah, no, because it's a horrible thing. And I think one of our favorite things in the world was when people would find our stories online and get very angry about them because they thought they were real, and <laughs> and, and you know, and we'd get all these like like emails and and we were like, ha ha, look at this dummy. And now it's so weird that this is just part of the the misinformation that that is ruining our our nation. <laughs> it's just people like specifically doing this for nefarious purposes. Um, yeah, so it's 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 weird. <laughs> For me, those Onion News Network videos were formative in, in thinking about the, the highs and lows, the best and worst of television, because you're oftentimes poking at the, the worst of TV news and the bad yeah. habits of TV news. Yeah. So, but, the, but the point is, it's not fake news. It's not designed to trick you. It's designed to make you think. Yeah. So what were you all? And what, what do you think you're trying to say with those videos in particular? Well, I think we were just sort of reminding everyone that everything has a bias, you know? And, and so just when you watch something, figure out what the bias is and what, what, you, what you're watching, mm -hmm. you know? and, and yeah. yeah. Uh, Will, you were EIC when The Onion moved to Chicago. Seth, you were the head writer at the time. What sort of transformations did The Onion, or evolutions, did the brand go through? In those just kind of ran it into the ground for yep. a couple of years. I think. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was the big transformation was that the, it, um, under our uh, stewardship, it uh, <laughs> stopped being a, a print issue. Yeah. We, 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 we lost that weekly, which I know, I think, if I'm speaking for both of us, that was a big deal, that square and what you fit into that well, front page. Well, you put on the front page. Was, I still, to me, was always the funniest way to read The Onion. And yeah. so that was a big deal. Yeah, that was a, I mean, I think it, it probably didn't happen, it probably happened toward the end of our Chicago time, I yeah, think, yeah. was when the last paper left. I know that Will and I, that's when we really started to do daily stuff. Like, and um, it, we were sort of charged with doing that. And I remember, you know, it was a lot of, intense creative conversations because we didn't want that stuff to suck and we wanted that stuff to still feel as, and who knows if we were successful or not, but we wanted that stuff to feel as special as the issue because we, I still, you know, I still think of the issue as like, that's a comedy piece of a thing yeah, right. and people take home this comedy <laughs> thing. And, and the amount uh, of thought that went into like, where do we put which side box and which one line yeah. goes where? You, you made jokes in the weather yeah, box. Absolutely. Yeah, Every, it was really part of the that, that's, right. that was all very crafted, but I think we yeah. had to be somewhat realistic in that. Hey, look, if like there's a bombing at the Boston Marathon, we have a daily we have a daily website that comments on the news. It's kind of insane if we don't talk about the Boston Marathon bombing because people are actually going to The Onion to see what we have to say about the Boston Marathon bombing. And we so, sent you there to, to the bomb site. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was live, yeah. and I was reporting back, yeah. and I was in the boat. 
<laughs> yeah. I was in the boat with him. Yeah. So, uh, so that, uh, you good. guys remember the I, boat, right? I remember. Yeah. Not as bad as guys you think. Uh, anyway, what's I, think up? Have, I think we had Taylor Swift dating the boat. That's a right. Bit too. Yeah. Taylor Swift. <laughs> Taylor Swift. It was Taylor Swift dating Watertown boat. Yeah. Watertown. yeah. <laughs> but that. So that's the move from zeitgeisty to really timely. So and it was almost yeah. forced by the, the internet and by everyone being online all but the time. Will and I really tried our best to make sure that, because along with the stuff with Rob and Carol and all are saying about the daily stuff, there is still that part of the onion that still to this day does great evergreen content yeah. about area man, area woman, uh, digging into like the sadness of everyday life. Um, like the headline, area man makes it through day. Would still, <laughs> would still work in today's onion as it would in Rob's onion, as it would in Will and I's onion. And that's, I think, honestly, that's what will make the onion stand the test of time, mm -hmm. not just like the topical stuff. Yeah, we still have like a, a weekly evergreen meeting that we you know, pitch those ideas and go over them. And it's, it's sort of the same, but it's not like, you know, in the past we would be like, well, we did a, a joke about you know, any kind of topic, like uh, like a musician or something. Yeah. It's like, we should probably not do jokes about rock stars for like a week or two. <laughs> and, you know, so now it's like just a torrent of, mm -hmm. of satire at all times. <laughs> yeah. But where did Area Man or, Carol, where did Midwestern Woman, where did these tropes come, where did that idea come from? I mean, I think it was just taking that newspaper speak, you know, journalism yeah. um, um, language and just applying that to like what are basically like observational jokes, um, which, uh, you know, I loved. Like that was some of my favorite, you know, just like, like the area man confounded by buffet procedure. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, which is a great character yeah. in Onion Lord, Don Turnby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, like, still has a place in, yeah. Yeah, and... When you uh, say character, what do you mean by that character? Are these, are these people that are photographed over and over again? What do you mean? No, there, so he's, so there's one character in Onion history who's very much addicted and loves fast food, and his whole life revolves around fast food. <laughs> And just like food in general, yeah. so there's Airy Man confounded by proper buffet procedure. There's um, I th I, I'm gonna buy. Man, not just... sure about rap. Yeah, not sure yeah, about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we just have his head, so we have to like take the photos. It's yeah. one, and, one yeah, expression and, that we've just used yeah, a thousand times. Yeah, and just times. put the head, right. Photoshop it on the body, whatever he's doing. And I think there's one where he's waiting for the ne he's driving on the highway and he keeps on waiting for the next exit, <laughs> for the best fast food restaurant to pull off at. Yeah. He just wants to get, like he wants a Burger King and he's not getting a Burger King. Yeah. And um, no acknowledgement that there's been 20 stories on the same guy so, over yeah. the years. And, told, yeah. Yeah. and he doesn't age. Yeah. And he has the same wife and yeah, all that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. They use the same name on purpose. Yep. Yes. I think I missed that. It was hiding in plain sight. It's, it's there. I mean, you shouldn't be looking for it. <laughs> 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 it's sad that we remember. It's sad, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of running shit. Nothing. <laughs> it's but the, you said, you Carol, yeah. Yeah, it's the it's the candy of the onion. You know, the broccoli yeah. is like the hard hitting. Like this is this is the current event. Hard hitting. Should be like thinking, yeah. you know, thinking this about this this topic. Um, and then there's just like the fun dumb jokes about about the guy who eats fast food. Yeah. And, and that idea of helping, you know, thinking about the sadness of the world, helping people get through the day. What, what else, you know, contributes in the writers from those conversations about what, what are we trying to channel? Are we trying to channel the, the mundane that everyone can relate to that doesn't ever actually get covered in the real news, so to speak? So I mean, make it to lunch. I mean, really, that's yeah. the main <laughs> make it to lunch. A lot of lunch focus. Yeah. And then the sooner we can pick jokes, the sooner we get to lunch. <laughs> yeah. How I remember it. I'm not yeah. even being good. That is how I remember it. Yeah. Um, you guys were a lot of lunch based stuff. We were a lot of lunch based <laughs> yeah. stuff. Not, not the onion, just. Yeah. Are the writers, uh, I haven't been there in a while, are the writers still overwhelmingly depressed? <laughs> yes. You know yes. What? Yeah. Yes. And, and nice. I think depression starts spreading around, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think where, that's where a lot of it comes from. Yeah. Comedians are just yeah. um, really sad, depressed, yeah. dark, I mean, dark people. anxiety, too. So I think it, it's a form, I think the onion, in, in, <laughs> among other things, is a kind of a form of self-therapy for, yeah, for the writers sure. to, yeah, yeah. you know, kind of exorcise I, their own demons. And it could be wrong, and I, I mean, I'm, I'm a, I guess I'm a millennial, but I do think the onion's thrust is still a Gen X thrust. And, um, oh. and honestly, I think that might be the funniest thrust. And I, so I, I'm, gla I'm glad that I was able to like slip into that because um, yeah. I don't know, the Gen, yeah, Gen Xers I, I are really agree. fucking funny. Like, like I, 
Yeah, it's like very cynical. Like the yeah. idea is yeah. like it's just very cynical and, and a little sarcastic and a little like ah fuck everything. Yeah, don't everyone's be lame, stupid. Don't be lame. Every you yeah. know like I'm afraid. Yeah. I'm depressed. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. the onion. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think Carol, didn't you once say it was like the onion? It aren't aren't people who write for the onion aren't people who are inside of a party. They're the people like outside of a party, looking inside, wishing they could fit in with the people inside the party. And I don't know. I've, I've, I think that's absolutely true. Mm. Yeah. Well, and we have so many jokes like man, like man spends entire party playing with dog. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is just a true story. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right. Right. Not satire. Yeah. <laughs> But then oh. the satire is putting it in the newspeak and that yeah. ma making, yeah. it a, making it feel like a very official that blunt, event of record. That objective news voice. Yeah. I mean, right. the place really resembled, uh, uh, it functioned like, a, like any newsroom, it's, aside from the fact that we you know, made up this, the stories. Although in that way too, mate, perhaps. But, but, and, and then even uh, then the thing that killed but we, the, the we thing. adhered, you know, we, we had our copy of Strunk and White. Uh, you know, yeah. we mm -hmm. adhered to strict AP style. And, yeah. and what killed the print issue was the same thing that killed Right. Real print issues is the ad revenue just fell through. Right, every every college paper that's gone out of print, yeah, that's right. you know, it's the same dynamic. Um, but you know, I, you mentioned the, the copy editing. The editing must be a critical part, Robert. Like the you know, it, not only the writing of the jokes, but then getting them down to be to sound like a news article. Yeah, which yeah. often means tighter, tighter, shorter, more pithier. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I, I I was I'm kind of a. Uh, I mean, I'm a, I, I was probably the newsreader uh, on, on the staff uh, who, who read the New York Times and, you know, strict AP style. Um, and I, would you literally model your pieces off of the Times and the Post and real, and, yeah? Yeah, yeah. You have your, you know, kind of your nut paragraph and then you, I mean, it's structured. <laughs> it's written like, you know, certainly we stri strove to write it like a real, quote unquote, real, right, real news story. And I think that's kind of must be what Chad must be dealing with now is, I think that back when we were writing The Onion, that is what that was the voice of news. That's yeah, what everyone yeah. knew. It was that authoritative uh, voice that everyone understood. This is the news. And now I feel like it's it's not that as much. Yeah, anymore. people have grown up with like a more casual style, yeah, yeah. and it's it's more entertainment. You know, so it's like generational generationally it's different it's Sometimes. more like also like outwardly opinionated even yeah if it's not an yeah this is why you of, need to know this yeah, yeah. You know? sometimes i think even right. headlines in the onion now sound more authoritative than headlines in the new york times and washington yeah. post because there is like a sort of i i just think i feel like in the in the new york post and washington new york new york times and washington post you see a lot more commas you see just a lot more like casual yeah, language much more casual. setting like mm -hmm. in this season blah 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 it's like very Lord, like York a lot of a positive two sentence mm -hmm. yeah. New York Times yeah, has yeah. Done these, they keep doing these two sentence headlines with a period at the end yeah yeah, yeah and they yeah. use the word slay the other day and I'm like slay should not be in the New York Times yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just, uh, and slay also, out of also the, New the York leads Times. are usually really soft or they're very featurey like yeah. we just yeah. unless we are like specifically parodying a, a like feature story we would never do like you know, John is a normal guy who does this. You know, yeah, yeah. just would never lead into it yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the times is slipping. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> they here? to be pulled up to the standards of the onion. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, were, were there news events that y'all didn't want to touch, Robert, Carol? Like, you know, September 11th comes to mind. What, what do you do? What do you do? After? It's a real pain in the ass. You just want to. <laughs> no. As, Dude, he wanted as to cover Giuliani it on Wednesday. 9 11 was. What? Wait, okay, yeah. say more about this. You wanted to cover it on like 912. Oh, oh, oh. You're like, hey, Mike and Chad, come on in the office. Yeah, and we, the rest we, of the office. We, we, we had six days off, Chad. We <laughs> no, <laughs> Mike and I came in and then there was no internet. Rob was going to be like, we should get oh. something out. <laughs> There's like no I, fucking I, I, internet. I don't remember it. That it was way, great. But... It was great because it was all anyone was thinking about. And we came We had in. a scrap. We did a whole issue. We had a scrap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just like. We found the real victim. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, we had a big at the time. It was it was Gary Condit jokes. That was <laughs> oh. uh, the uh, 2000 and, election. And we had to start over too. Yeah. No, we um. Well, we we kind of called it, but then we had another issue going in, and they still hadn't because it was uh, yeah, Bush or Gore and new. We didn't. We had to have it covered both ways. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like in a World Series, they print the T-shirts for both teams. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, Do you remember what y'all wrote after 9/11? Do you remember 9 the tone? Yeah. Do I remember? What was, uh, what was the tone? What, what, how do you? Um, it was, uh, I mean, all we were really trying, I don't know. It's remembered as kind of a really ballsy high wire act, but we were just kind of, I think, 
trying to express how people were feeling. The the little uh, kind of I don't know what you call it, but Desha? The, no, just where it says "Holy fucking shit!" As oh. like, you know, it was like America because like everybody had those like America under attack with the mm -hmm. graph, you know, and they'd build this the page around that, and ours was "Holy fucking shit," which I think that every everything kind of um, flowed out of out of that. But yeah, no, I, I remember. Uh, about yeah, that issue. I mean, yeah. I would say that one way that it was different than other issues is I think normally we had this like attitude of like, I don't care who we offend, you know, like like uh, we're gonna say whatever. And I think that we really like we were not like we're gonna like stick it to the U.S. for their for their military history <laughs> right. and blah blah. You know, we were just right. like we right. did not actually want to offend yeah. anyone. We wanted to like, you know. Put, somehow, like, create some band aid for this grief or just express yeah. what we were We would all just feeling. become New Yorkers, you know? That was like, we moved yeah. to New York in January 2001. So it was like, this is happening to us at the same time, you know? Mm -hmm. People thought it was really funny, and that wasn't even really our aim with it. We just were trying to kind of express. It's just when you have all this built up pain and emotion, you know, and you just need a release for it, um, just simply expressing what people were feeling. Like, Carol did a story, you did the American flag. Yeah, Cake yeah. One, a woman not knowing what else to do, a woman bakes American flag cake. Or yeah, and it was just this <laughs> tiny, sad story about this woman who just baked an American flag cake. And, yeah. um, it was just really <laughs> dark and sad. And, and people just were like cracking up, which is a weird, because, um, you know, it was just like, a re it's a release, which is what comedy is. You know, yeah. it's, a, right. it's a way of like processing pain. Chad, what have the headlines been in the past uh, week or so about Israel? Any that you remember? Chad's that, uh, in the hot seat. Uh, <laughs> Chad's yeah. in the hot seat. Any, any that, any just favorite? Giving hun hun trouble, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, like, you know, I mean, well, today you had one of those, you know, man on the street interviews where it's, uh, you know, Biden goes in 60 minutes and he says, he says, uh, you know, yes, we can handle Ukraine and Israel. You know, we can handle two wars, support two countries at the same time. And I think the man on the street quote was, uh, I think we could half-ass four wars if we had to. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, a lot of it is like reaction, you know, not just the war news, but then yeah. the, the reactions to the war news, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you know, I think we try to cover it from how things go in the media. Um, so, like, our article, we did an editorial that was, uh, the Onion supports Israel because we'll get in less trouble for that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think it was pretty balanced in explaining things and explaining how, like, the reaction where there's, you know, things on the far left, like, people reacted really poorly uh, to Hamas. And, and, like, we kind of point that out by, well, also kind of putting in, you know, like, like the other problems with, with the region, you know, and, like, how... Uh, the media doesn't seem to care about Palestinians and things like that, and it doesn't get really reported on. Uh, or they conflate the two and make Hamas and Palestinians the same yeah. people. Yeah. So. so let's dig into that, the joke there. Great. Is it getting less You know, Do you all throw out 10 ideas in the writer's room and realize that eight of them are going to get you in trouble, are going to get you spanked? Oh, oh, yeah, we are, I mean, you know, people, that's the thing, is we have the freedom to, like, pitch jokes, and, yeah. and it's, it's a room where it's, like, it stays in the room, you know? Yeah. Um, and you get lots of different ideas, and, yeah, there's stuff like, but there's no way in hell we're ever running that, you know? Like, uh, I th you know, I think, like, we do try to speak truth to power, and, and that's also, like, we also believe in humanity, you know? And, like, yeah. that we don't want to see, like, victims killed of, you know, any, anybody dying from this stuff, so... And it's like, you know, it started happening. I'm, I'm just filled with dread because I'm like, I know what the next two yeah. weeks of news cycle is going to be. Yeah. Right. And I think that was like 9-11, too. It's like after 9-11 happened, you're, everybody's like, oh, shit, we're just going to be at war. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think we knew it was going to be like the next eight years. But, oh. um, yeah, so it's, it is a lot to deal with, and there's, it gets contentious at times. And, um, like, I don't think 9-11 was really contentious. I don't think there was, like, a lot of arguing. In fact, we had, like, office managers coming in and like yeah, we were like we I don't remember okay. one writer yeah. who was just like we cannot print this issue we will Ooh. be run out of the city and we we're like I don't think we so. knew yeah, we yeah we were <laughs> I think the difference is and why I'm glad I'm not there now is just the culture has shifted like um, um, I don't know the con I, I think when I think of like what is the number one word that I see just as I go through my life looking at headlines swords slams 
like yeah. which wasn't a thing back then. Every uh, so and so slammed for such and such. So and so slams so and so for saying such and such. I just all day long all I see is the word slams. And we didn't. And, and 20 years ago, you just didn't have that. Like, okay, if we say this. We're going to get slammed. Yeah. Right. It wasn't a race to be the first it's, one it's to react against what someone's that, saying. Like it, that machinery for yeah. shame on, the shame on you yeah. engine, it just wasn't as robust or even existent. Well, social media has been like right. the worst <coughs> thing for like Ugh. things like the onion and for humanity. Like, it's, <laughs> it's good, like letting That's people share their opinions was the worst idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, <laughs> Yeah, most opinions are just terrible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here, here's another good one from this week. Jewish man reassured after being told anti-Semitism doesn't exist. You know, it's like it's, so you all are hitting it every day. You have to, but you're also thinking, gosh, this is going to consume us for however knows how long now. Uh, how many of you remember having to wrestle with uh, the aftermath of a mass shooting and how to report on it, write about it? I assume all of We've you. All, I think, oh, I think this, definitely this. Tr we, we oh, because there's been. We're, two, Col yeah. we're Colin by yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wasn't that during the uh, Ardham Century book signing? Yeah, there, we did a book signing for our book, Ardham Century, like a week after the. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. There we go. <laughs> great book, great book. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> um, we did a shooting. We did a. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> we did an office shooting. Uh, we did an office shooting. Uh, yeah, after that, we did we did a signing uh, like a week after Columbine. You know, we were, there, there were some yeah. threats, and we were kind of nervous. Mm -hmm. um, but I, to me, there were two us. eras of these mass shooting headlines or or handling. And I, I think many people know the, the the more recent you know version. We can talk about that in a minute. But what you know, uh, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, how would you all? What, what would you do? How would you, what would you write about? Oh, we'd make jokes about it, of course. Right, but, but what was the framing? How would you, you know? What, I, I don't understand. What kind of framing did you have? Well, so, so the current frame, why don't you explain, Chad, the, what you all now post Oh, that every thing time. that they do every time. Yeah, yeah. The, the no way to prevent this says, uh, God, I can't hear the fucking headline. <laughs> so, so <it's> only <laughs> country, country, wait, wait, what's, what's the? Yeah. No way to yeah. prevent this says. This, I just, that is pick, copy and paste at this point. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But, uh, <laughs> update the thing. Said yeah. only country where well, this regularly happens. So, right? so it's every time now for years. I, I wrote about this for CNN. We, we did a segment about it on TV. Like you just recycle the same to make the point over and over and over again. Yeah. But I'm just thinking, Chad, there had to have been a period before you all came up with that template. Yeah. Where oh, you yeah. had to react to Aurora and every I mean, book. Yeah. And that was other. a meal missed. Yeah. We were supposed to have like our Christmas dinner or something like that yeah. that night. And we, yeah. Yeah. We just had Which to one, do Aurora? depressing. Yeah, Aurora. We just, the Colorado what, one. What's the gorilla? No, it wasn't Aurora. It was the yeah. the, the well, there's elementary the school. The gorilla yeah. sound. What's Sandy Hook. Yeah. Sandy Hook. What? Oh, they all blend Sandy together. What, what's Land. what's the gorilla? What's that? Well, it was like sales of gorillas skyrocket. jump skyrocket after latest gorilla attack. What yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm, right. Uh, yeah, right. Um, oh. <laughs> Wait, wish right. we could remember. Right. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it, pr probably in our in our, you know. In our comedy writer brains, we thought we, every time we maybe thought we're going to have the great headline that says it all, and then when it keeps happening, right. sort of like, boy, it feels less important to have the great new original headline that solves it or says it all, and, mm -hmm. and then that's probably I I don't I don't think I, I, I think that's what in, led to no way yeah. to prevent this because yeah. we were like, you know, you you get like you see the news on a Saturday night, and then you're you're like, hey, let's brainstorm. Something to get out today on a Sunday, right. and it's just like, God damn, this is depressing, yeah, you know. Right. And like, what do you say after a while? It's like there's just so many, like, switches and, and jokes that you can make the constructions to use, and um, right, right. And it's just incredibly depressing too. So that yeah. that would became kind of powerful, and, it, and part of it was just how the website was constructed when we decided to, to keep doing it. Yeah. Um, because then it auto fills with all it, the yeah, other examples. The way it used to work, other shootings, it right? would just show the next one in line and then of the same article, and it, that became kind of powerful. And then last in May 2022, with uh, the Texas school shooting, we just filled up the whole homepage mm. with it, and right. and that just spread because journalists started. They're like, look at the Onion homepage right now, and it's right. you know, I don't. I think it was like. 
20 articles or something like that or close to it. Yeah. But it's it's pretty powerful to just to see all these ambulances yeah. and police right. tape. But, you know, just to show that we're still comedy writers, I remember on a lot of those days, someone would always slip in, like, a really intentionally tasteless, yeah. awful, just to make us laugh. We would not print it. Yeah. But just to, like, come on, you know? Yeah. Like, this is so... I don't remember any, and I wouldn't oh. say any if I did remember any, because they were just intentionally sort of like, we can never run this. <laughs> but it made, you know, and, and on, on a, what would always be like a really grim yeah. morning, it was yeah. kind of like, thank you, whoever put that in there, yeah. just to keep us going a little bit. This is too distressing. Let's talk about Donald Trump instead. Okay. <laughs> uh, Donald Trump, 2015, take us into the Onion's <sighs> approach to Donald Trump and, you know, and, and the campaign. Chad? Oh, wow, you're really not picking good topics right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, the thing is, is he's, he's so <laughs> hyperbolic about everything. And that's, that's what's that make your job harder? Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. makes it way harder. Like, yeah. what you want is, like, a normal politician, and then you just mock them, you know? <laughs> he's the trying to do the, He's trying to do what we do, in a way. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think that's, like, it's uh, pretty unfair. Uh, I, well, I, Seth, you also thought that at late night with Seth. Uh, yeah, I mean, sh I, I mean, the, I will say just in terms of the Onion part of this, it would be rare to go to the Onion and see a joke about Donald Trump's hair. Right. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, I think a writer at the Onion, if they pitched a headline about Donald Trump's hair, would be politely asked to leave. <laughs> <laughs> because I think an Onion writer knows well, that's what everyone's making fun of. Uh, What's the second thought? What's the third thought? Mm -hmm. And that stuff, I do think, tends to resonate a little more than if you're inundated with 5,000 jokes about Donald Trump's hair. Not that these jokes are bad, and not that these jokes can't be told with some style, but, you know, <laughs> I think in... Uh, hair. And, uh, <laughs> but I think uh, Onion writers know, like, no, we're not, we're, we're not going to go that direction. We're... We're going a different way. Well, that's the great thing about the Onion process, the war of attrition of all these headlines coming in. Mm -hmm. You can see in a big batch of headlines, oh, kind of like 20 people are kind of making right. the same joke. <laughs> right. Stay away from that joke. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and so you try to pick the one that's like, oh, there's no one, not only is no, no one else in this group making it, but I bet if we kind of put in some of these keywords in this joke into Twitter, no one else is making this joke on Twitter either. You want to find that, that yeah. one, right? And, and writers actually do that. They go on to Twitter. No, no, I'm saying stuff. if one were to do that, yeah. Right, right. right. Yeah. Carol, did you wish you were there for the Trump era? Do I wish? No, for, uh, no I'm happy for these, <laughs> for these reasons. Like, like exactly. Right. Like, it's, it's just, you know, he's such a buffoon that it's hard to even, you know, make a joke about him. It's like you can do stuff that's like him talking, like now is not the time for empathy, and then you kind of play off of that type of thing. Um, but like, that, it, that also gets pretty tiring after a while, too. Where you're just like, I'm sick of this, you know? Yeah. Like, so is Biden easier? Has Biden been a gift to you? I don't know. I mean, it used you, to be. Yeah. Well, what was the original, the OG Onion take on Biden was what? The, the cool guy with the Diamond Joe. Those were the yeah. days. Yeah. I mean, you want, that's, I think, Diamond Joe got me too, you know? Like, uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Say more about that. Why, well, did we, why did you write that article? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, like, it, as soon as stuff came out, like, that, that some people were, were saying, like, oh, he's just a little too touchy feely and, and just, like, accusations, it did not, and, and I think it's mo mostly me too, is that, like, it doesn't feel that great to be like, here's the punchline of a joke is that someone's being incredibly creepy with women. Mm -hmm. And I think, and that is such a crucial part of that character. I mean, I, I put a lot of my heart and soul into that character. <laughs> and like, uh, it, it, it was the rock stuff, okay? Like the. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he was, he was like, he was like. It's like, a, a, it like his, his love of like hair metal and. Yeah. And, and yeah, but he was like, like a, del like, it was just the, it was just the joke of like being sort of some Scranton, PA, Delaware dirtbag. Yeah. Right? And that, and it was, and it was just expanding on that. But once, right. I, I do think once current events changed, not just me too, once the politics changed, and I mean, I actually don't think that article makes sense anymore in, in the culture and the zeitgeist. Like, it, it would be weird, I think, if The Onion did that, did that character now, because I think we don't see Joe Biden as that anymore. Whether you like him or don't like him, I don't think that even resonates. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the Obama presidency, 
that did sort of hit at something we all kind of felt about this guy. Like he didn't have any responsibilities. And well, that's so the thing. That yeah. The character only works when the guy's kind of in the background like yeah. the VPs are. Yes. When, but, he's, yeah. when he's right there in the foreground, it's not as successful. And, or and easy to I will say people are mad. They're like, what? oh, he's president now. Why don't we have this great character? And it's just like it doesn't really fit. Yeah, you know? and, and like, yeah. And also like. Just like I don't know, we had him like making out with Paul Ryan's wife at the debate. <laughs> <laughs> that was a gross article. Yeah. It's like him just sticking his tongue down her throat, <laughs> and like it's it's pretty nasty. It's like yeah, I don't know, like it, I don't know where that fits in these no. days. How would you describe the Onion's portrayal of the president now? Then I, I think we take him to task for his politics a little bit more, you know, like when it seems like he's gone back on his word on stuff or um, I think we just hit him for those kind of things, you know, like if it feels like he's, you know, said he was going to do this and, you know, he's done a lot of stuff that he said he would do, but there's certainly points where it's like, I don't know if it's, it feels like that, so we'll, we'll, you know. You treat him like a normal politician. Yeah. 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 Chad, he's really old. Maybe you can do something with that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we may have hit that a little bit, actually, too. That's, that's the hair of Biden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do any of, you, any of you have favorite memories of people falling for Onion articles, thinking they were real? Does uh, any, any of those memories come to mind for many of you? Uh, the Chinese government. That was cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That, was great. Yeah. that was that one. Was that the dome? That was, was the, the Beijing dome. Yeah, the, paper, the right? capital to build. Yeah, it was, at a, it was at a time when there was like a stadium. Uh, every sports team had like wanted a new stadium. And, um, and it was a thing about how Congress wanted a new, you know, state of the art capital because they're all, you know, it's like a 200 year old. <laughs> totally dilapidated capital, no skyboxes and that kind of thing. <laughs> so, wasn't that what it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, the U.S., down. yeah, a new, you know, $500 million state-of-the-art retractable dome <laughs> capital is going to be built. Um, and that got picked up by the, the Chinese media. <laughs> it's, you know, yeah, high great. five. <laughs> well, the, the best part is, like, then they were informed that The Onion was satire, and then they just said, like, American newspapers are filled with lies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they doubled down on the... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> Can any of you in the middle top that one? Any other favorites? Kind of life for Kim Jong-un? Yeah, yeah. I think we did a thing where uh, The Onion had named... Every year we would do kind of a year in review, and we did the sexiest man alive was Kim Jong Un. And I think and North Korean North media Korea, picked yeah. that up, kind of ooh, admiring. <laughs> Finally, a, a Western media source agrees with our opinion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then they said American media is full yes. of lies. So they came around. Uh, how, have, how have you all brought your experiences at the Onion to your other roles, to your other jobs, uh, Robert, uh, Pam, and Tommy? Is there a connection? Is there inspiration uh, in your later career? Yeah, um, so I went on, I'm, I'm doing uh, like movies and television now. Um, the first thing I did after The Onion was The Wrestler, which is like a pretty dark, yeah. kind of dark thing, um, which feels like, I think maybe to the four people who've ever given it any thought. That's great. Um, is like a, very different from The Onion. Um, I guess the way I've always looked at it is like everything I've ever done, I feel like life is, Part, one part comedy, one part tragedy. So back in the Onion days, it was sort of like, um, I, th I think of the Onion as, as comedy with a strong undercurrent of tragedy. Mm -hmm. And sort of everything I've done since then is tragedy with a strong undercurrent of comedy. Mm -hmm. Which So it's just kind of a question of balance. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because life, I think life is funny and sad, um, as I think most good Onion articles kind of, <laughs> you know, have that. Which version of that mix is more uh, um, rewarding for you to work on? Is there, a, is there um, one that you prefer more? Uh, I kind of, no, I go, I'm happy to kind of go back and, forth. back and forth. Life has kind of taken me more toward like drama that's, uh, you know, I mean, my favorite movies are, are technically dramas, but they're very funny, you know, like Goodfellas right. or, you know, Boogie Nights or like dramas, but they're hysterical. That's yeah. kind of my, my favorite lane. Um, <clears throat> But I would never do anything that's just straight drama with no mm. humor because it just doesn't it doesn't feel real to me. Um, mm -hmm. And and same goes the other direction. Yeah. 
And Carol, how about you? Uh, community, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, uh, uh, among your credits, any, any Onion influence there? Um, I would say that the things I ended up doing aren't particularly satirical, y y you know, but I, I think it, it is, you just always want to kind of like stand behind the message ultimately of, I don't know, just sort of like keeping in mind what ultimately your show was saying or what your character is being. I mean, also I'd say just maybe the thing that The Onion prepared me for is just that comedy is kind of a grind, you know, like it's a fun job and we all laugh, but really a lot of it is just like sitting in a room and like working hard and like having putting away your ego because you have to listen when someone doesn't think, you know, listen to the opinions of the group and that's sort of, you know, what The Onion helped me with. Yeah. I think it kind of raised the bar. I mean, when I look at what everyone's done after leaving The Onion, I think it would be hard to leave The Onion and do something like write for a really lame, you know, Tim <laughs> Allen sitcom or something. But, um, sorry, I don't want to single him out, but. Because uh, <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know I have a show in development. <laughs> You know, Carol's writing for, you know, I'm a, as a proud Onion alum, I just love seeing, like, Carol's writing for Community, which is an incredible show. These yeah. two guys wrote The Fucking Menu, which is an incredible <laughs> movie. Um, I know, and when talking about know, the, the menu... Daily, the Daily yeah. Show has Onion DNA all over it. Rob, um, yeah. Rob also didn't talk about one, yeah. a great movie called Big Fan, yeah. which is a, an amazing movie and very onion -y. Mm -hmm. It's like, so... It's such a depressing yeah, yeah. portrayal <laughs> of an area man who's plumb lost his mind and because he's obsessed with something. And I think The Onion does a really good job of making jokes about normal people who are obsessed with things. And it's funny when you see in the news voice, yeah. but in Rob's film, it's, we're experiencing it through that character and it's, uh, it's, it, it's a great watch. It's also a tough watch. And I think that's, um, mm. I don't know, The Big Fan is a great movie and you should check it out. It's very oniony, oh, I think. Thanks for the plug. <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to the menu, I feel like I, I, there's, I totally see connections to the onion sensibility and what you all pulled off with that movie. Bring me into a world that, that feels very real and then surprising all of us. So what, how, tell us how, how the menu came about. Um, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Just <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was I was I, I on honeymoon with my wife years ago in in um, Norway, and I'm I'm sort of an annoying foodie character like the Nicholas Holt character in the movie, and um, we uh, went to a town called Bergen on the west coast of Norway, and I kind of did my research into what's the place you have to go yes. to, and there's there was a place on a uh, on an island that you wait on a dock and a boat picks you up and 12 other people and you go to the island and you have dinner. And I'm just sort of a nervous, claustrophobic person. So I was excited about the restaurant, but then when we got there and I'm on this island, nothing on the island but the restaurant, and I see the boat pull away, <laughs> I started to get a little bit like, and I did say to my wife at the table, that would be a good story for something. I kind of like, you know, Budwellian thing of like, mm -hmm. you're literally trapped at the restaurant. Um, and uh, I told that I, all I had was that just basic thing. Yeah. And then Seth and I actually made that into a story. Yeah. And then I think we kind of, I mean, <laughs> Will and I kind of immediately locked into like puncturing like ego, ego of the chef, ego of the diners there, you know. And also, we, you know, we, we actually wrote the menu kind of the way onion stories are brainstormed. Like we, we had this idea, we liked the idea, we, got, we knew we wanted to do this idea. So all other ideas go away, this is the idea. And then we just started brainstorming who would be in that restaurant, here are some good plot points, here's some story, and we outlined it all together. Mm. And then when it came down to writing the script, I would go off, write 15 pages alone, uh, I would send it to Will, he would do like a pass of those 15 pages, he would write 15 pages, he'd send it back to me. And what was fun about that was we got to like be in our own little stalls writing, but also we got to surprise one another as we sent our pages back to one another. And that was always really, really, really fun to keep, like, keep, it, keep the writing process feeling kinetic. And that had yeah. an oniony right. feeling of you'd write your first draft and you're kind of excited about it and you 
turn it in and you know the whole group's going to read it. There's going to be a meeting about the draft. Yeah, and, and it's like, cool. And it's you cool. get excited and sometimes it wouldn't always go your way, but sometimes when it did, it felt it did pre feel pretty good. And, and it's cool as you like to like not, I think like no, I actually think no artist, no uh, actor, no writer is too cool for school. Like yet they want like a pat on the head no matter what. So <laughs> like if it take a little bit longer for me to maybe to read Will's pages, I would eventually get a text like, hey, like, did you, did you check that out yet? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 the same, and the same for me, too. Yeah. Like, hey, what did you, and like, I would write, like, this thing, did you see that yet? Like, you know, it's. Yep. Uh, and again, in terms of the onion of it all, the, the, one of the gifts of the onion when you go on to do other things is that you, the writer's room continues to kind of live in your head a little bit. You're, yep. And you're always kind of thinking, well, what would, what would they think if I brought this into them? Would they think it's fucking lame? Would they think it's lame? This guy also wrote for Succession. Oh, yeah, we're going to get to that. It's, a ri it's a yeah. excellent. Yeah. I have an audience have question succession? about that, but, but let's do that first. So Succession, um, you know, a satire of, of media moguldom. Uh, what, what did you bring from The Onion to Succession? Uh, well, I mean, you know, I, I don't, that's a good question about The Onion part of it. Yeah, I guess working at The Onion, whether you want to or not, you develop kind of a working knowledge of politics and media and business, yeah. Amer specifically American politics and media and business. And Succession was a show mainly written by Brits, and I was sort of one of the few Americans in the room who had kind of a working knowledge, a little bit first-hand knowledge of, of, that, of that world. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. I guess that's what I brought in terms of why they wanted me there. But also, you know, I, I when I wrote Onion Stories, the stuff that I really like to write, and it's still kind of how I write now, I did get really into the research, you know, and I wanted to make it feel, if it was a story about Congress, I really wanted to make it feel like a story about Congress and, and get all the details right. Yeah. And, and to make the bill sound like a real bill, even though it was a completely fake bill, and to make the process of how that bill is enacted feel like it's one of those stories. And yeah. so... Um, I, I think that's, you know, everything that I did on Succession, the episodes I wrote, they were all really based on, on there's an episode that I wrote where the family goes out to meet another media family because they want to buy their company, and they're kind of a blue blood, liberal, northeast version of the Roys. Yeah. And so it's kind of, and it's almost a sitcom structure of like, everyone be on their best behavior, right? <laughs> um, dad's business partners from Japan are coming into town, everyone act normal, one of those sitcom episodes, <laughs> yeah. but it's the Roys. Um, mm -hmm. And that's based on a real thing, where, where the Murdochs wanted to, you know, when they were buying Wall Street Journal, they had to meet with the family that had controlled it forever, and kind of sit down and put the, everyone know, knew about the Murdochs and what they were like, and so uh, they had to pretend like for a day, hey, everyone pretend that we're happy families here. <laughs> um, what, what's great about that that episode, <laughs> and I think those, it is also oniony. It's like. That liberal family is also a piece of shit. Yeah, completely fucked. <laughs> you know, like they're just a piece of shit in a different way. Completely fucked. Like they're yeah. they're egomaniacs too. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. but they but they do it in such a sort of that's right buoyant. It you just know, had kind of liberal niceties yeah. put around the kind of right. craven egomaniac. And I think yeah. the Onion Writers Room would see like, no, no, you're not good. Yeah. You yeah, got yeah, that. Yeah. You're doing that. And yeah, I see how you want attention. Like, yeah. yeah. Do you miss Succession the way many viewers do? I do. Yeah, it was a really, really good, it was a good gig. Yeah, with the writer's room was in London, so it was like four months in London <laughs> writing the show, and then we'd shoot it in New York where I lived, and so it was, yeah, it was kind of a dream. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, one of the, I was one of the writers being like, yes, four seasons. It's like, that we should end it after four seasons. <laughs> and then now it's like, what am yeah. I, now that I'm on the outside, it's like, let me back in. <laughs> 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 There's so much respect for that decision from the outside. Like I work on the morning show on Apple TV, and we're working on the fourth season, and having the kind of conversation: how long is this going to go? Yep. And it's that same dynamic of there's something really bold about knowing you're going to get to that ending yes. and not drag it out. That's right. It's very brave. And that feels good in that moment. You feel bold and brave, but now it's... <laughs> let's do what, let's see if it's an eight. Greg is, you know, right. it's now a paper company, and they're, Greg, <laughs> and they're on the moon. I don't care. Just, I want to go back to London. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, I don't know if I've told you this, Will, but like, there are some scenes in that show that are so painful for me because I I like lived through those moments of like a CEO making a terrible yeah. speech. Yeah. Uh, oh, I was yeah. like, how am I supposed to enjoy this? Like, uh, I'm just having a flashback to a dumbass trying to rally the troops. Did the onion your experience of the onion inform some of those uh, scenes in succession? 
well, there is a, yeah, there was a, there was a season um, on Succession where they where yeah the Roys buy a kind of digital media company and make a lot of promises and like hey we just you guys keep doing what you're doing we're cool you guys are cool we're all gonna be cool. And um, yeah, there's been a lot of that in the Onion's history. I mean, not, I'm not saying currently, but that, there's, that's, some, that's been a theme that has run through yeah. the Onion a lot. It's sort of like, the new owners who are coming in, they're really cool. And, <laughs> <you know. laughs> Just keep doing what you're doing, do more of yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I think the Onion, you know, if, if life were perfect, which it's not, but the Onion is a crown jewel in any media empire. Mm. It's, it is beloved, and so, mm -hmm. Hopefully, it, you know it's always treated as such because there's nothing like it. There's still nothing like it, no matter no matter what. Yeah, that's an interesting point. There's not like a, you don't nope. have an arch rival. Nope. You don't have a you know it's not Fox and CNN, MSNBC. It's just the Onion. It's just the Onion, and and huh. and, and, and every and any time someone tries, that whether they're good. I mean, there's actually some good stuff out there that's that's Oniony, but I do think ultimately the Onion sort of ends up putting its stamp. On that event or that thing or that feeling, and I think the people and I think people respond to that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of news parody, but the Onion is really about doing it with a super straight face and not being about, you know, the likable character who's presenting the comedy to you and that sort of thing. It doesn't. It doesn't have to have that likable character sheen to yep. it. It's just, <laughs> you know, dry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chad, take us into the writers' room for a minute. Uh, what's the production process and cycle nowadays? Now that it's always on, twenty-four-seven, reacting to the news. So we'll usually have like three or four days a week where we're doing timely stuff. So everyone comes in the morning, pitches their their timely new headlines about current events. Yeah. But in that same process, we also have people working like one day a week writing evergreen headlines, and so we have a long meeting on Wednesdays in which we pitch those mm. and. We kind of fight over that stuff, pick out the best stuff, and then that all got, gets kind of layered together. So you'll have some yeah. timely stuff, some evergreen, and it's, it's just like an endless cycle of mm. deadlines, and uh, <laughs> I just watched my life slip away. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want The Onion to be in another generation, or at least in another decade, uh, when there's another panel and you're going to be one of the alums up here? I, I would like... I feel like I would love to see it like continue, and I would I would love to like I don't know like I would love it to be in print, you know. I would love it somehow to have that or or to to because that experience is like yeah. really amazing when you're picking specific articles like okay this matches great with this you know we got an Aryan Man mm -hmm. story we got a story about Congress uh, here's some goofy one about animals and then you just you just yeah. go on to the next thing and. Uh, I, I think that's like, it's it's not like there's a, a change of like, oh, what is this, the quality of this thing or that? It's it's more like how you are choosing these things and why you're you're choosing them. And mm. so it's it's like it's more organized and uh, and like kind of compact. So it's like here's this week. Right. Yeah. And I think now with the internet, it's just like I said, it's a torrent. It's just like a flow of stuff that's constantly going. So I think the more, like, if it exists that there could be, um, even if it's not issues, but something that's that's more in that mode a of curated like, thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like I think right. that b back when we were at the Onion, there was the paper version. I think people would sit down and read the Onion <laughs> cover to cover, yeah. and I think that I it's did. just sort yeah. of like. Uh, uh, you know, people don't have the attention span anymore, and they sort of like click around, and then, yeah. you know, and it was just a yeah, it was like a, an experience that people participated mm -hmm. in. But if you're here in ten years and the onion's here, that means the onion is still good. Yeah. And I do think ultimately, like the onion just has to stay good. Yeah. yeah. And the onion, for, and like yeah. really, and it there, always has. Yeah. And it always had, and like for, there's very few comedy institutions that stay good. I mean, really, if you think about it. So, um, mm. yeah, a, a good onion is 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 good for. Sorry. We won't keep it much longer. It's time for audience yeah. Q and A. Um, oh, good. Uh, <laughs> and I, I'm going to ask each of you. Uh, you, you Get out your phones, you gotta Google it, gotta remember what it is, what headline you're most proud of from your time at the Onion. So think on that. 
Yeah. But first, here's oh. a question from Paley member Grace Stark, who asked Will, uh, while Succession's technically a drama, it was also one of the funniest shows on TV, how did you determine the perfect amount of humor to inject into each episode? Well, I, luckily I didn't have to make it. It was all you, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, all, the ultimate determination of everything was made by, by Jesse Armstrong. But um, yeah, as an EP with him and the other kind of EP writers, we, it was something we did talk about. There were some scenes, you know, and, and sadly they would be often very funny scenes with very funny actors, but yeah, sometimes there would be a scene that would feel like maybe we're having a little too much fun. Oh, too much, huh? Um, and that sometimes you'd have to stop and be like, what, what do you mean too much fun? Like, it's, if it's really funny and it's fun, let's just put it on. But then you could see how um, if you put it in the midst of a story, a business story or a family story that's quite the temperatures of it is quite hot, and then this kind of funny scene comes in, the rope goes slack on the episode a little right. bit, and actually the scene is, starts to feel not as funny as you thought it was, uh -huh. and, it, and it, it doesn't really work. And so that, that's something that J I think Jesse had a very good, um, good radar for that. Um, and, but you know, uh, you know it's, it would, uh, there's still quite, a, I mean, really, if you look at the script pages, it's, there's jokes on every page of, of Succession. And, and it was mainly comedy writers in that, or people who came from a comedy background uh -huh. in that room. And I think actually it was more, I think HBO had an interest in, at, in the out, at the outset, from what I understand, of getting more kind of, well, boy, it seems like a lot of comedy writers. It's a drama show. It's a one hour. Should we get some more like drama people in there or playwrights or whatever? And, mm. uh, but it ended up being actually the comedy people who would thrive the most. I, I kind of have a uh, maybe somewhat self-serving theory that I, I think that comedy writers actually have an easier time writing drama than like peer drama writers do have writing comedy. I think for actors it's the same way yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if I, you can do comedy, you have sadness. <laughs> <laughs> and if you and if you can only do drama, you might be a good actor, but you might not have comedic timing. And I think yeah, that's yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's, I, I think there's something to that. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I think also comedy writers spend so much time absorbing the conventions and tropes of right. drama and tragedy right. and spend so much time parodying it or satirizing it that when they actually have to do the real thing, they, they kind of have the muscle memory of like how to write a scene like that and how to do it right. for, for real a little bit, but just with a bit more realistic commitment to yeah. the, the emotional truth. And comedies have to have drama, otherwise exactly. you get, yeah, yeah. You you get have, notes. If you're just thinking it's just funny, there's no drama. It's yeah, all tension. You have a you plot, get, yeah. and you, you have a plot, it. and you also have to have jokes as That's well. That's a better way of putting it. But they don't right. have to be funny. It's not yeah, fair. That's right. <laughs> yeah. We should get twice the money. <laughs> kind of bullshit. <laughs> Uh, Paley member Patrick Simon asked our fi final question here. Uh, which Onion headline are you each proudest of writing during your time at the Onion? Final question? That, well, well let's, uh, if you have a good, if you have a good answer, I'll have to keep asking questions. It's our second question. So, <laughs> um, I, 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 I follow the directions. Okay, Google it. He looked it up. Oh, I follow directions oh. because it, this was on the thing, so I, I found a couple. Uh, one a fucking loser at movie all by himself. <laughs> Wait, which you are the, loser in the photo. Fucking, oh, lo fucking loser at movie all by himself. <laughs> uh, that was written by me from about my neuroses when I am that person all the time. Uh, rise in teen pregnancy proves teens still got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm in this picture too. Uh, Man Googles Matt Damon's address because, well, he's crazy and wants to murder him. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that's great about the, the, every time we re-promote the uh, fucking loser at movie all by himself, yeah. people get really offended by it. And, like, and it's like, it's so funny because like the person who wrote this is just writing it about himself. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm, I feel like I'm so sad when I do that, and I, but it's also just playing on like, no one's paying attention to you, but what if they were? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> what if they notice you? <laughs> when I hear those headlines, I go right back to my editor brain, which is like... Shorter? No, I'm, I'm always like, shorter. I'm just like, that's hysterical. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no... You know what, that, that's a funny thing. I think that's why I was always, like, a better head writer than, like, an editor-in-chief. Because, because I, li I like to laugh, and I like, yeah. I'm like, let's go, team. Whereas, like, an editor, I do think an editor-in-chief has to be like... I, let's go team, but also... Take it easy. Take it easy, and uh, take it easy. Yeah, yeah. I could potentially fire some of you. Yeah. I won't, but... So I don't, I, 
<laughs> or it's like if you're a head writer, yeah. you're like, you guys are great. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. No, I love to crush dreams. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Nothing better. I mean, a good writer's room needs a wet blanket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. And you are a great one, Rob. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. No, you're right. A good writer's room needs a, needs a wet blanket. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else have a memorable favorite headline? That uh, was? I, I had a uh, seagull with diarrhea barely makes it to crowded beach on time. <laughs> And then there's a good New York centric one that I, I just, it felt so good. Um, it's, it was back in 2007 or 2008, the uh, Patriot season perfect for rest of nation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll notice none of these have been like political headlines. Yeah. Though, yeah. You know, right? They're kind of the, yeah. the area man style. Yeah. Does like, that tell us? Yeah. Like, I think one of my favorite is just like, um, area roommate has that weird Jeff smell. <laughs> because it was just a picture of my roommate Jeff. <laughs> Everything about Jeff. And then, you know, it was. Jeff it was, Worthen? Yeah, Jeff Worthen. <laughs> yeah, so, what should the headline about tonight be then? Oh, uh, Brian, you fucking suck. Oh. <laughs> Other, other I'll, I'll bet so it's kind of fucking sick. Otherwise, fun evening comes to disappointment. <laughs> 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 I don't want to even try to top that. that that's, that's a, that's a uh, thank you to our uh, amazing panel. Thank you to London Voter Geo Media for having us. Thank you to the Perry Center for having us. And uh, let's get back to writing. Thank you all. Have a good night.